I remember when I used to pray as a kid, uh, we, would, uh, we would often as a family pray during meals. So it's probably something that you do as well. Um, and, and many people will use like a common table prayer. Uh, and ours uh, was taught to us as kids. And, and it went something like this. And I'm, I'm hoping I can remember uh, how it goes. It was, thank you. We thank you, O Lord, for these fine gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we prayed that every time. I mean, there was no other prayer. That was it. Uh, however, it never sounded like that. Because when, when we would pray it, we would pray it as fast as we possibly could. I mean, it sounded more like an auctioneer, you know, hey, you know, you know, it was like really, really fast. Like there was a word at the beginning and a word at the end and an amen, and then we were done. Uh, because we didn't see really what prayer was. We didn't understand that. You know what I mean? Like, like, like it, it never dawned on us, and it was never really um, like, like shared with us that, that this was communication, right? This was part of our relationship with God, that, our, that the Lord loved us so much to give us parents and a place to live and some great food and, and even dessert every once in a while. And, but there, none of that, it was just like being, having good manners. That's what you pray. That's what you do before you eat. And that, and that was it. So it was the way to get from right, the, right into the dinner. And it felt more like when your parents tell you to clean your plate and eat your broccoli because you're not going to get dessert. That's what prayer was to us. Right? It was just this formality. It was just this, this thing that we had to do. And I look back and I'm like, I'm kind of sad that, that it was that way because prayer is certainly not that. Now, now, we can make it that way. We can, we can, we can just kind of say the words. And, and even with the, uh, the Lord's Prayer that we pray often, uh, we pray really at every service, uh, that can become something that we just kind of go through the motions, right? But, but it doesn't have to be that way. And that's what we want to look at today. We, we don't want to just talk about prayer any more than we wanted to just talk about Scripture last week or, or talk about community the first week. Um, there's more to it than just outlining what it is, right? I think what I want us to be convinced of and leave this place and say, you know what, Lord, why would I ever not pray? I want that to occur to you. Like every day, like, man, why, why, why? Why, why do I just kind of let things go? Because prayer has everything to do with your relationship to God. And you know how important communication is in every relationship. When you're really tight with somebody, when you're really close with somebody, you talk to them. You don't let time go. Now, you might have that one friend who you, you don't talk to for 10 years, and then you just pick up where you left off. But, but even then, like, like, how much better would that relationship be if you talked at least once a week or, or at least a little more often? You, you would know what was going on in their life. They would know what was going on in your life. There may have been some issues, uh, right? Because a lot of times you're like, wow, you lost your mom or this happened or that happened, and, and, and you weren't there for any of it. Now, your friend is still your friend. But imagine the things they could have helped you with or things that you could have helped them with. Right? It's like that old hymn says, right? What, what peace we often forfeit. What, what needless pain we bear, don't we? When we don't carry everything to God in prayer. And notice in that hymn, it says everything. The good, the bad. But again, we, even as adults, like I, I look at my life sometimes, and, and my prayer life especially, and I could condemn the kid, Fred, right? The, 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 the young guy, oh man, you just got it wrong. I should know better. But how many times does prayer just seem like a formality, like good manners, like something we have to do? Like, when's the last time you really prayed? I mean, like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane prayer, right? You're sweating, it's blood. I mean, you're just like, I mean, you're probably, that's probably never happening to you. But, but you know what I mean? Where you are just going like, Lord, I, I don't know what to do here. Notice I didn't say when's the last time you prayed a prayer. Because I, I, we pray a lot of prayers. I, I, I read prayers. And, but they're not meant to be read. They're meant to be prayed. 
It's meant for, for, for us to share what's going on in our hearts. All the pain, all of the misery, just like we would with someone that we love and someone that we trust. And so as we look at this being challenged, right, we're looking at habits. Uh, and so we want to see like, okay, it's not just prayer, but how do we prioritize it? Like, how do we say, like, man, this matters more than anything, and a day shouldn't go by without me touching base with God, maybe throughout the day, not just when it's meal time, not just when it's bedtime or time to get up, but every moment, like, it's just this ongoing conversation with my Lord. Look at Jesus' habit. If you look at uh, the, the gospel reading from Luke chapter 22, remember, he's in that garden, and, and, and he prayed. And he prayed, and he told his disciples to pray, right? Because he knew they were weak. He knew that, that they weren't perfect and that they weren't going to get it right, and they needed strength, and that's where that prayer would come in. And it always seems strange to me that, that Jesus would pray. That was his habit. You, you could find in all of the Gospels many, 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 many instances where Jesus got up before the sun even came out and was praying often by himself. And I've often thought that weird. I mean, I don't know about you. Do you ever think that that's kind of strange, like the Lord of the universe needs to pray? See, but that reminds me that it's not just about this formality, that it is about relationship. Jesus is, I mean, you can't even wrap your mind around how tight that relationship is with him and the Father. They're part of the Godhead. They're part of the Trinity. And as he is in that garden, as he is in all those aspects of his life, praying to the Father, that's, it just comes natural to him, I think. It's what they do, right? It's what we do as human beings. We, we communicate, we talk, we share, we, we support, we listen, we do all of those things. And that's what Jesus does. So, so if we're going to grab one of his habits and embrace it, Prayer is going to be a huge one, right? Along with scripture, along with, you know, studying it, and along with community. And have you noticed, like, that all of these go together? Now, we're studying them week to week individually, but, but like, right now, we're doing all three. <laughs> we're a community, we're getting together, and we're praying, and we're getting into the Word. Notice that. Like, it's all there. It's all, hopefully, part of the regular rhythm of our lives. See, and I think part of the problem is we, we forget who we are, and, and, that, and that speaks to the scripture one from last week. Because if I don't read this book, right, if I don't read God's word, I'm going to forget that I need him. I'm going to forget that I'm broken. I'm going to forget that I'm more than broken, that I'm lost and condemned without him. That I need what only he can deliver in my life. And so that makes prayer something that's an absolute essential. See, but if I'm, not, if I'm not filling myself up with this, with this truth, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm just going to plow through life and be like, man, I got this. And, and, and those are those days where you get to the end of it and you're like, man, I am so worn out and beat up and I just feel like so depleted. Why? Because I didn't fill up. I, I thought it was about me just kind of muscling through. Or we give up. Those are the extremes, aren't they? And, and you don't need God for either of them. <laughs> to just give up and say, oh, who cares? Now, there's everything in the middle. But I think what God wants us to do is, is to acknowledge that, that without him, we got nothing. In, in Scripture, Jesus said, he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. And that's, that's why prayer is important. It's a reminder that, that I need to be connected to him every day with all that I'm doing and, that, that, and to know and to hear what he's saying. I, I came across a quote and I, and I, 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 I quote it. If you're watching, the, if you follow the, do the follow-throughs all week, you'll see this on here. So act surprised when you, when you, when you hear it. You're like, oh, that's a fresh story. Uh, but I'm going to be repeating myself. But I, I need to because this is such an important one. Uh, John Piper, this great preacher, uh, he talks about prayer, and he says one of the issues is that we really kind of lose sight of, of really the reality of our situation. In other words, we think that we're, we kind of exist just to be made happier uh, and, and to be more comfortable, when actually, when you look at Scripture, we're kind of in a spiritual battle. We're in a war. 
And so prayer, he says, the image that he uses, he says, he says prayer has taken prayer, we, we have taken prayer and made it, um, it's supposed to be a wartime walkie-talkie. And the image there is a guy who's, uh, you know, maybe really close to enemy lines or, or, or inside enemy lines. He's taking fire, like all this chaos is going on around him. And, and he needs that radio because the radio has, is connected to, to command, right? So command can, can bring in airstrikes. Command can, can, can bring in extra troops. Command, right, it's going to tell him what's going on and where he needs to go. It's going to tell him something he can't see from his limited v- visibility and place where he's at. Now, do you think you would need to, like, sit down with that guy and go, man, you need, don't, don't lose that radio? <laughs> no. Now, he makes sure that thing's working. He makes sure that thing, he knows where that is. And he's in constant contact for the battle. He needs it. But Piper says what we do is we take that and we turn it into a peacetime intercom. So, so instead of needing support, instead of needing more help in the battle, right, I, I need more snacks for my man cave, <laughs> right? So, so I'm like, Lord, give me some more stuff. Now, Piper didn't say that. That's my paraphrase of it. But it's more like, you know, Lord, can you bring me something? Lord, can you help me with this? And again, there's nothing wrong with asking God for help. But again, I think a lot of times we're forgetting that, that, that the battle is his, and, and he is the, our power in that battle, because I don't know about you, I asked this in the earlier group, and I'm going to ask it to you, like, is anybody free from suffering? Does anybody not have anything going on in their life? That's distressing, and that's, you know, you really want me to mention it right now. Anybody? Anybody, like, just cool, everything's good? Everyone you know is good, and, and the people that they know are good? No, every, I think every one of us who's watching this online or who's here, we can all, like, like agree that life is tough and there's, and there's battles to be fought and there's things that are happening to us. And, and, and it's no, there's no accident that, that James, when he starts off talking about prayer, look at what he says. In, in James 5, 13, he says, if any among you are suffering, right? We're like, yeah, there's a lot of us. Let him pray. That's the move. Take it to God. Talk to him. Okay, if you're cheerful, we'll sing praise. Thank God. I mean, this is checking off the list that, uh, that Deb had in the kids' sermon, isn't it? Right? Adore him. Confess. Uh, let me see if I can get them all. Uh, you know, thank him and, and, and that supplication to asking. And this is what he's saying. Look, if, 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 if you should be in prayer. So if somebody's sick. What do you do? Well, you get the elders there, and they, and they pray over him. They anoint him with oil in the name of Jesus. And it says the prayer of faith will save the one who's sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed, because the prayer of a righteous person has great power in, as it is working. Now, again, we got to make sure we don't lose what he's saying here uh, and, and think it's some sort of magic formula. That if we just pray the right words or if we just pray that magically, right, presto changeo, you know, whatever the problem is, that person's just going to jump up out of their bed and, and be better. That doesn't always happen, does it? And yet, I've seen people, as we're praying, and in great pain and in great distress, experience a peace that they've never felt before. Pain's still there, the difficulties, there might be an uncertainty as to what lies ahead. See, but God, even in those moments, God gives us something deeper. He says, I'm not going anywhere. He says in those moments, he says, I've got you. And that even if death were to take you, I've even defeated that. Right? There's no sin that, that, that's beyond what my cross does. You know, that, that it covers it all. All the guilt, all the shame, all the pain, all of it. He has answered it. He has taken care of it. He has destroyed it all. Anything that would separate us from him, taken away. And so we, we can pray. I want us to look at all of that and say, well, well, why should we pray? Well, look at all he can do and look at all that he is. Why wouldn't we? 
want to just pour everything out to him, seeing the power that is there. Now, again, the power is not in me. It's real easy to misunderstand that, that comment about, or the, the passage where it says, the prayer of the righteous person has great power as it's working. Notice, the prayer has the power. Why? Because it's talking to God. And as I wrestled with this this week, I thought, well, well what do righteous people do? They, they pray. Right? They're in the game. Now, someone who's not righteous, someone who doesn't care about God, well, they're probably not praying. They're probably not going to him. They're probably not pointing to him. They're probably not in the word. They're probably not looking, right? Because the word even shows you how to pray and what you should pray for. If you notice prayer in scripture, it's always, it's very, very specific in most of the, it, it's, it's to benefit somebody else, to lift them up, and it's to glorify God. It's not, hey, Lord, can you make my pile of cash bigger? It's, it's, Lord, I need the money because I need to help these people. That's different, isn't it? That's, it's not terminating on you. It's, 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 it's going out into the lives of people around you in a real way, in a, in a life-transforming way. And, and that's what we're talking about here. I mean, look at all this. This is a, somebody can be, can be, can be raised up and, and forgiven and loved and know that, that God is there. And, and just so we don't get it wrong, he brings up Elijah in verse 17. He said, look, he was a man with a nature like ours. So, so the guy put his pants on one leg at a time, right? He had the same. He got hungry like everybody. He's not a superhero. He doesn't have a cape and tights. He's not some sort of angelic being, right? A lot of times we do that with guys in the Bible. We're like, oh, you know, I can never be like them. But when you look at them, that's the point, is that they're just regular guys. But they're used by God to speak for him. Because the power is in God, not us. And, and, so, and so James is really quick to point that out. He said, hey, just so you don't get it wrong, Elijah was just a regular guy, but what, look at what God did through him. He prayed fervently that it wouldn't rain, and, and for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. And then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. If you go to the Old Testament and you look up that passage, this is at the command of God. So, so in other words, Elijah was not like to show my superhuman superpowers, right? That I'm like Captain America or, or, or one of those guys or Spider-Man with some kind of special force in me. No. I, I got to imagine it was with some fear and, 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 a, and a lot of awe. that he was like, all right, Lord, you want me to say this? Lord, Lord you want me to pray this? You, you want me to command, command this thing to happen? Just think about that. That's going to affect a lot of people when it doesn't rain for three years. But, oh, it, but it was the point of the story, as you look at it, is it was God's command. It was God's plan. It was going to teach us. It was going to teach them. It was going to show his glory and how awesome he is, that he could even use a human being, but that he's going to make it happen. So that's the point with prayer. For us to not see it as just this, this, this intercom system that says, Lord, I need more of this. It goes way deeper, way deeper. It's sort of saying there's a battle going on. It's a battle going on inside of me. There's a lot of things happening around me, right? And we could say amen to that, what's happening in our nation, what's happening in our, in our world, even in our churches and just in our communities, even in our families. We need him. And that's what prayer is all about. Prayer is God saying, hey, I'm right here. I'm right here. And I am far more willing to listen and to help you than you will ever be wanting to actually go to me. So the problem is not him, it's me. I want to pin it on him and say, well, Lord, you know, you're slow to act, or you're this, or you're that. And, 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 and honestly, if we're not in the word, we're going to think that he's some detached, like CEO of the universe who just doesn't have the time for us. But that is simply not true. I want you to hear clearly that he's your heavenly father who loves you. In fact, Jesus encouraged us to call him Abba, Father. 
That's like a, a very, 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 that's like dad, that's like daddy, that's like pop, whatever, you know, whatever kind of special name you give to your dad. That, that deformalizes things, right? And it's like, that's the guy, when I, when I skin my knee, he's there. Right, he puts that mercurochrome on there, it stings, whoo, you know, and you jump up and you put the Band-Aid on him, and, and dad goes and does that, mom goes and does that. Those are the people that care about you. When you were a kid, you knew you could go to them, and, and God's saying, look, that's me, like, like in, a, in a perfect way. Whatever you got going on, just come to me. And I love how James really zeroes in on the forgiveness part of it, because I think for, for many of us, that's the biggie. That's what shuts us down. That's what, that's what plagues us. These sins that, that are on, on our hearts. And we're like, again, we feel like we got to plow forward or, or we're just going to give up. He's like, how about, how about you just know that I took that on the cross? How about you just know that, that the price was paid for all of those things, all that burden? You were not meant to carry that. But you were meant to bring it to me, to tell me about it. And notice, he says, we could, we could do that together. We could pray together. It's powerful when you're praying with someone, especially when they're like just sharing what's going on and the brokenness in their life and how they just, how they just it feels like they want to give up. But you can, like in your prayer and in your conversation, say, no, but Jesus is really died for you and he loves you. That's power. You see things change. You, think, you see things happen. That's what God wants for us. He wants us to be free, right? He wants the people in our lives to be free and to be saved and to be loved and to know that God cares about them. And then that cross was for them. That sacrifice that he made was for them. That this eternal life that he gives is, is meant to give them hope as well as us. So I'm praying that, that when you see all of that, that you're like, I don't want to miss that. I don't want to miss any of that. I don't want to miss seeing God do those things. I don't want to see like, like, like how awesome it is when God's working among his people. Isn't that so much different than, hey, do I have to pray? We used to joke with uh, going back to the beginning where we talked about uh, the table prayer. A lot of times we were like, well, we, uh, I remember at college, we, we, it was just like chips and like soda that we were having. And we looked at our, our theology professor and we were like, hey, do we have to pray? <laughs> you know, as if there's some sort of like minimum food products, like quotient that you have to have, you know, like, okay, if you have some sort of meat, then you have to pray. Or, you know what I mean? If there's more, but like chips and soda maybe doesn't count. Can it? Why would we not want to acknowledge God is with us and be reminded and be encouraged by that.